Hello and welcome back. I hope you had the uh, uh, time to grab some coffee. Our next talk is going to give um, outsourcing a face, making it less anonymous. I'm happy to announce Michael and John and give them a warm welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Um, I'm John and we wanted to try to give Yesterday I did a presentation on, on sourcing um, Type of 3 services and it was a big global trends view looking at 2015 and global market share of CMS and everything. But then it comes down to people um, and it comes down to working with people. So I would really like people to right now, this is Jurgen's favorite part, to get up and if you could please come over here if you could please. That would be great. And so everybody, if you could stand up and come together if you're in a row. And if you're the only one in a row, maybe you can talk, go to the person so that you can, because you need to stand right next to somebody. And it has to be an even number as well. <laughs> I know, it's technical. It's a bit hard. It's a bit hard. But come together. There we go. Now. Look each, now turn around so that you're facing somebody, facing each other. Okay, you need, oh, we have an odd number. We have an odd number. I was wondering what would happen if that would Well, I will help out. Yeah, Mike will help out. Hey, Mike, very good. Okay, now I want, because this is about a personal journey. So look, look the other person in the eye. This is a psychology experiment I did when I was in high school. Smile. Say hello. Hello, my name is Michael. And say one thing you like about the other person. Thank you. It I shouldn't take sure. too long to think of this. I'm glad that you joined our talk. Thank you very it's much. It's okay. And I hope you enjoy and have a nice day here. And a good. good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I just, I just wanted to, because the talk is about making a personal journey and a personal connection. And so that's kind of what I wanted to try to, to illustrate now, and then we're going to go through the talk. Yeah, you can sit down now. Thank you. So, that was it. Um, yeah. My colleague, my esteemed colleague, Michael. Yeah, let me introduce you. Oh, my maybe. name is Michael Lies. Uh, it changed a few weeks ago since I got married. I'm 34 years old and from Karlsruhe in Germany. Uh, and I'm working at a company called Punkt.de. We will introduce it soon. Um, and we mainly do type of free development. And in the last couple of months, I also went into some Ruby stuff and um, some infrastructure stuff and uh, DevOps. Um, besides programming and working, I'm passionate about cycling, climbing, photography, playing and making guitars. and. Um, yeah, this is a little presentation on what I did at the beginning of the year when I was able to go to Cambodia for three months together with my colleague Sebastian, who's also here. Mm -hmm. And uh, we will try to give you an impression of this journey. Okay. And I'm John Bowers. I've been in IT sales about 20 years, um, more than that. Um, been living in. I, at least I didn't drop mine, but mine did come off. I've um, been living in Phnom Penh, Cambodia, working with Web Essentials um, with my family. So because I'm married and have a family, I don't have as many um, activities outside of work uh, as Mimi does. Um, but um, we do have a dog, two hamsters, and a turtle. So that helps. And two kids. So um, can't forget them. So, okay. Um, I just wanted to um, look at sourcing services. And when I thought about this, I was like, well, how far back does sourcing services go? Because there's, you know, there's the, the Indian phenomenon and all that stuff. And I thought, wow, this goes way back, doesn't it? It's not just IT services like what we think about. It's services. Now, I want to do a personal thing. And, and actually, my father is... Czech and Irish, and my mom is Japanese, and they met in America because back in the 1800s, they were sourcing labor to build a railroad across the United States. And so my great-grandfather came out from Japan, 
to work on the railroads, and then my mom and dad met at the beach in San Diego, and so this whole sourcing and outsourcing thing, I thought, wow, that's a pretty personal um, piece on there, I, I had, which I hadn't even thought about um, before, but that's, I just thought that to try to put a, a, a face on, on that, and that's one of the only pictures of actual Japanese um, railway workers that I could find. So, um, yeah, so I just wanted to try to give a little insight into um, where this is coming from. Um, and now, we've been working at Web Essentials. I've been working at Web Essentials since really November, um, remotely, and then um, we moved out in March. Um, we're an open source company dedicated to Type 3, um, 100%. The average age is 24 years. When I, before I joined, it was 23 years. Um, we are in constant innovation mode. We're constantly trying to keep up. I mean, you know, Mimi's got like 15 years of programming experience, and our guys just haven't had that, that much experience. They, you know, they've got five, six years. Um, but then we're, we're always trying to, to make it go faster, make it smoother, make it, um, you know, keep up with everything. Um, um, but we also have real strong family values in the company um, so that it's not just, you know, a developer, hire and fire. Uh, we don't do that. We really try to, to build people. Um, and one of our, our taglines is developing software and developing people. Um, we have a, a, quite a significant social impact, and to talk about that um, a little bit, um, you need to l understand a little bit about Cambodia. It's about 15 million people among the 50 poorest countries in the world, um, but in the early 70s, it was the Switzerland of Southeast Asia. It was really nice, it was really peaceful, everything was really good, but now, it's, it's a mess, and I, and I didn't understand that because I looked at, okay, World War II came along and Europe was a mess. 35 years later, Europe had really picked itself up. Everything was you know, going pretty well. Well, 35 years later, Cambodia is still a mess. Um, I think it, what was different is that um, there's still a huge legacy of poverty and of mistrust and of, and because it was, an implosion internally where they killed up to a quarter of their own population, like up to two million people uh, under just horrific conditions. And, and so it's taken longer to, to develop. Um, and an amazing statistic is that 50% of the population is under 25 years old, which makes jobs and employment a really, really big problem. Um, because if you don't have so much external trade um, uh, <clears throat> and uh, developed infrastructure, then how else do you do it? You know, what, what other jobs? There's tourism jobs. It's a great place to visit. But what skilled jobs are there? How do you know? And, and there are, have been a number of initiatives to help develop out of um, out of poverty and you know, in undeveloped countries, bring in development, which means developers, and that's kind of what. Um, the approach that we're taking. Okay, so coming back from Cambodia to Germany, that's where I work, at the company called Punkt.de. And um, all those people you see on this slide are working for us. Unfortunately, they are all black and white, they are not in real life. Um, we are based in Karlsruhe, and I think founded in 19, Jürgen helped me out, 1990-something. Okay, <laughs> whatever. Um, as I said before, we are mainly doing um, type of three, and besides doing development, development for customer projects, we also do hosting. Um, the project we took with us to Cambodia, one of the projects is directly connected to this hosting. You see it outside, it's the, the Code Coon project. And um, the nice thing, or one of the nice things to work at this company is that um, Jürgen, our CEO, is very into sending us to conferences to, to give us the possibility to learn outside the company, to have an exchange with other companies. We have many type of free freelancers of the core teams coming to us, sharing their knowledge, working on projects together with us. And um, one of those extraordinary 
um, possibilities to be on such an exchange was uh, Sebastian and me going to Cambodia and work with Web Essentials for three months, which I think is quite uncommon for a company that they let their people do that. Mm -hmm. So what was my personal motivation to do that? Um, well, it took me quite a long time to finish my studies. It's been about nine years. Um, and for some reason, I never managed to go uh, to a foreign country in this time, although it was quite long. So when I started to work at the company, I talked to Jürgen and said, OK, uh, I will start now directly after finishing the studies, but I would really like to go abroad for about three months. And we discussed several possibilities, like uh, quitting for three months, going to another company, working on completely different projects. And the second possibility which we choose was looking for a company with which we can collaborate with our own project, take the project with us, and work there together with people from the other company. And um, I had the chance to meet Dominic, the CEO of uh, Web Essentials, at a conference in San Francisco in 2011. And he talked to me about what he's doing in Cambodia, and I felt, whoa, that's really something different compared to like going to the US and working for a company there, because you go from a Western country to a Western country, and besides working in another country, there's not much that will change. And it seemed to me that going to a country like Cambodia could make a, a big difference in the experience you get there. So I had another chance to to get to know what they're actually doing when I attended the conference in Asia in 2012. And I actually was at the company and I got to know quite a few people there and some friendships raised. And um, I was really impressed by how they managed to to keep such a company running with, with people who were farmers some years ago and now doing IT business. Uh, so I thought, if I want to go abroad, I want to go there. And I also had the chance to meet Casper there, who gave an amazing talk about why and how he, he made Hyper Free and why he made it public and why he um, decided to share what he made. Um, and that was kind of a push for me to try to go there. So. After arranging things and uh, finding a way to leave for three months, the question was which project can I take with me or which projects can we take with us? And the idea was that we take an internal project, which you all saw outside, it's the Code Coon project, it's a project of our company, and also take a second project, a customer project, um, and try to work on those two projects in two different teams. So I was sent there and Sebastian was sent there. We worked with two different teams, we worked with two different projects. Um, and the idea of this Code Coon project was, I think you all might know Type of Flow as a framework for web development. And now our idea is to bring this concept of a framework on another level, but to relieve the, the developer from all the things concerning development environments, hosting, deployment, uh, to put this in a, in a package and ready to run without bothering to set up servers and, and stuff like deployment of this. So that's the idea behind CodeCoon, and you can imagine that this project is quite complex, and I will come back to this later. So what was the setup for our collaboration? Maybe John can explain some of the backgrounds. Um, yeah, I need to look at my notes. So. Um, okay, yeah, before we... You know, we had to set up how it would work, but for us it was more um, <clears throat> how do we work on, on our side, not um, you know, how do we plan for bringing the people in, welcoming them, making sure that they're comfortable, making sure that you know, they're not just isolated in, in this place, making sure that there's social events, making sure that, that they're able to um, really fit in and, and feel comfortable and, and have a, a good working environment, um, which we, we did, but um, I think there was a little bit more um, that Michael or Mimi has to say on, on what he did to come out. Yeah, uh, we found out that both companies are doing Scrum. I don't know who of you is doing Scrum in the audience. Um, only two people, Ooh, three people, four people. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> okay. there, there, there seems to be a lot of this and maybe going up higher in, on okay. in the next few years. Um, I can tell you that it was a great benefit that both companies did Scrum and it helped us a lot to organize the project. Um, 
the setup was basically two developers from us kind of going there, working as a customer and as a developer and maybe a, partly as a team leader with two teams of three to four people. And um, I think it was especially easy to, to work in this setting because the two companies share so many common values. Yeah. As I told you, we, we both do Type of Free, we both are dedicated to, to open source, to the Type of Free community. Um, and I think this, this idea of not only developing software but also developing, developing people is, is evident in, in both companies and you can feel it and you can see that both companies live this. Mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, I think also the dedication to quality is really important because it's not just, it's not going to work if one side has really wants, a, has a very high standard and the other side has a very low standard. It's just too much fighting in, be, in between. If you both have the right mindset to, to aim really high, there still be, needs to be a definition of where that is, but, but at least we have the, you know, we're going in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And to, to get an impression how this works, um, well, how does Puncti do Scrum? We have two-week sprints in three teams. Um, every team has a fixed date, a fixed day of the week when the sprint starts. So it also has a fixed date for the uh, retrospectives, for the planning, for the grooming stuff. Um, and we have a dedicated uh, product owner for each team and we have a dedicated Scrum master for each team. Um, we use uh, tools from the Atlassian toolchain, Jira and Confluence, maybe some of you know it. Um, and transparency is a key to our collaboration with the customer. Mm -hmm. If you attended uh, Jürgen's talk yesterday on how our company is led, you have seen that uh, being transparent to the customer is something that we really live in our company. Every customer has access to Jira can um, see what we are doing during the sprints, has access to the, the um, sprint boards. Uh, the customers can prioritize their tickets and say what comes next in the next sprint. It's not us doing it, it's the customer doing it. Um, each customer can open up issues, can uh, write comments on issues. Um, and we send a detailed time lock to the customer so that every customer can see uh, down to the minute um, how long we worked on each ticket and we send it to the customer by the end of each month I think so he has a very good overview whether the estimation we gave for a task fits somehow with the time we spent and we are open to discussion if this goes in two different directions and then with Web Essentials it's very similar but slightly different our, our sprint cycles are shorter um, and you'll Maybe we'll talk a little bit more about why that, why that needs to be the case. Um, but the rest is pretty similar. I mean, we have, you know, we have Jurt um, that, that also, um, when we send things out, um, you can do Jira capture, which captures the screen, and, and you can draw on it and say what's wrong, and then immediately put it straight into the system so you're not dealing with email and stuff. And it just is, is, is a much cleaner way of providing the feedback and also setting up um, priorities and um, you know we work with um, with customers but then our customers may have customers as well and, and we can provide access to you know however our um, customer wants us to set up mm -hmm. okay then I want to show you the team that actually worked on this product because um, it was quite a few people they are not even all of them on the slide in the black and white pictures, you again see the people that worked on the, on the project at Punkt.de. The idea was to have a project that is shared throughout the company because we think that it was really a cool project. It was the chance to learn new technology and we didn't only want to have some people work on it, but we wanted to have the whole company sharing this, this new knowledge and this knowledge gain. Um, so all those people contributed to the, to the product or to the project in one or the other way and then Below, there is the team with which I had the chance to work in Cambodia. It's a team of three people and me. Uh, and there were also a few freelancers and people from the type of free community who helped us from time to time, like um, the Sebastian Kofers, maybe you know him, or Rasmus, who did a lot of the design stuff, and um, also Stefan, who set up um, the basic chef infrastructure with us. And, um, Carsten who helped us programming in, in Flow and 
it was always a pleasure to, to collaborate and to work with those people because it's always a gain for both sides to see or to only see how the others are doing things that you are doing too, but they are doing it in a different way, they are using different tools. And um, for me, it was really a great chance to learn a lot of things. Mm -hmm. um, this is Visai, you might have, some, if you guys are into Neos, he's on the Neos core team. And that's Chen Torn and Chen Tu. Yes. <laughs> it gets kind of confusing. We have a Chen Torn, a Chen Torn, one's a boy, one's a girl, a Chen Tu and a Chen Tun. So it's sometimes it's a bit hard. Um, and yeah. they're not all on the same team, so that makes it easier. Yeah, and after setting up all this uh, administrative <coughs> stuff, I would call it, uh, there was finally the time when I, when I started and uh, went off to, to Cambodia. And as you can imagine, there were a lot of things to do before I actually c could go. And um, it was a very busy time, so there was little space in my head to really think about what's going on. And I think the first moment when I realized what's happening was when I was uh, leaving the airport in Phnom Penh. You have to imagine you're leaving in Germany at 5 degrees with uh, pullover uh, long uh, trousers and uh, a jacket and you get off the plane with like 30 to 35 degrees in a completely different world with only 11 hours of uh, transition time. So this, there is not much chance to, uh, yeah, to adapt to this new situation. And I was sitting in this tuk-tuk, which is the common transportation vehicle in, in Phnom Penh, uh, driving through the streets and then somehow my mind settled. I didn't sleep much the night. Um, and then I thought, oh my gosh, three months here um, with uh, big projects, with expectations at home, with expectations at the new company, with a team I really don't know, um, my colleague only coming two weeks after me. And there was uh, like half an hour of, oh my God. <laughs> and um, it all settled. Once I, I came to, to Web Essentials and that was the welcome sign on the, on the door for me. And yeah, this, this sign uh, triggered something in my head and I felt welcome instantly. And it was really going in there, yeah, I wouldn't say it felt like at home, but it, it felt good and uh, a lot of stress was gone. And um, I was really looking forward to the next three months. Um, yeah, and I want to share some of this experience that I had there. So first of all, if you enter a house in, in Cambodia or most Asian countries, you put off your shoes. Um, even if you come as a customer, I think, to an yeah, yeah, office. Can. Most and um, you walk bare feet, which is quite uncommon here in Germany. <laughs> and if you arrive at the airport, it's not the taxi you take but it's those tuk-tuks and it's not that easy to take it because before you can take it, you have to negotiate. Uh, if you don't negotiate, they will um, charge you at least three times the price as a tourist. Just don't pay it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it was also interesting to see how Web Essentials manages its, its young staff, I would say, because, for example, they have breaks every morning at 10 and everyone is running to the kitchen, they get some food, and they're all playing Decreto. I don't know whether you have ever seen people here in Germany playing Decreto. Yeah, it's a bunch of 20 developers sitting around and throwing cards. And it was amazing how fast they were. And how loud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, something else I remember, it's quite hot there. I mean, it's uh, like when we've been there, it was the hot season, and it was up to 40 degrees, I think. But inside the office, there are a lot of air conditions running. And although most of the developers, I think, don't have an air condition at home, they turned it down to the minimum. So it was like 36 degrees outside, 18 degrees inside, freezing. And whenever I turned it up, they said, ah, turn it down, turn it down, it's so hot, it's so hot. Yeah, okay. Um, so, yeah, there are other things you cannot explain, like the, the smell of the air or the, the things that are going around the office. Um, it's just, it's like an island, the, the, the company office, and there is a lot of poverty and bad things going around directly in front of the door. And it's a big contrast to go in and out, I think, and mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so what were the challenges of the project um, that we faced? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, there's a big language gap 
because I'm no native English speaker and before I went to Cambodia my English was really bad. <laughs> and neither is English the native language of the Cambodian people you work with. So the first thing is to, over to overcome is you have to somehow make yourself understand them and try to say something that they understand. Um, and besides the language, there's a, there's a cultural gap because Cambodian people, the worst thing that can happen, I think, is for them to lose faith. So when they don't understand something, they won't ask you because asking means like, I'm stupid, I didn't understand it, can you explain it again, or I can't follow you. And this is automatically equal to losing faith. So the first two weeks when I explained something to them and the project was quite complex, um, I never could be sure if they say yes, whether they really understood me or not. And it might sound funny, but this was really a, a big problem. Yeah? Because they started to work afterwards and did something which they thought they understood and then like four hours later you look at it and it's something completely different. And overcoming this, um, this cultural problem was really a difficult task for the first few weeks. Um, also, I'm a developer and I do it for quite a long time, but I never had to do any project management stuff. And suddenly I was there on my own. I was not directly the product owner. We had a product owner at home, but I had to manage the team there. So I had to learn a lot of project management. And there again, Scrum helped me a lot because we had a common framework they knew and I knew. So we could kind of use the tools Scrum gave us to overcome this, this lack of knowledge that I didn't have. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting to deliver a product cross continents. <laughs> it starts with uh, sometimes really bad telephone line and uh, not sitting in a room face to face with the people you collaborate, but having them on a, on a phone or in Skype. Um, I come back to this later and another challenge was the complexity of the product itself because it involved several servers, several frameworks, uh, several completely different technologies. Some of them were new to me. I didn't work with them before. And showing others how to work with that was quite a challenge uh, in this setting. Mm -hmm. So how did we solve some of those issues? As I said before, Scrum did a good job there. The cultural gap and the problem of not talking openly with each other maybe um, we faced it in our retrospectives, which are part of Scrum. So every week, at the end of a sprint, we sat together and talked about it in a fixed setting. It's what, it was like a protected space where everyone could say everything. And it's really... I never thought that it, this is so helpful. And I like the idea of Scrum that it does not only help to develop software, but it also helps to develop the teams. Um, yeah, this... This combination of technical aspects and non-technical aspects that you can tackle with Scrum is really amazing for me. Um, breaking down complex things. One of the things that you mentioned on, for the retrospectives, you, you, had some, you had to think outside the box to try to figure out how to, to resolve that. What did you do to, to help with that? When you, when you realize, because I mean, a lot of companies can go through and just do the same things over and over, and then you have somebody else come in and, and they say, well, why don't you do it this way, or, or what about this? And I think you had a, a good example of that. Yeah, for example, in the retrospectives, it was like the, the staff at Web Essentials had a very fixed way of doing this, and it was the first two times I attended it, it was not talking much, but going to a board, filling in some ballots, some sentences, and then leaving, and that's it. And um, we changed that a little bit, and I talked to the Scrum Master, and I said, look, here is a website with some methods for, for doing retrospectives in different ways. And just by changing the method, um, it had a tremendous effect on how the team started to talk to each other during this one-hour sessions. Um, so Scrum is not only this, this tool chain, but it also offers a lot of different methods, and. I had the impression that changing some things from time to time like wakes people up and makes them work mm. yeah. Yeah, different and, and improve. <laughs> Breaking down things into small tasks uh, was very important. We had um, big user stories, all, most of the time packed into backlog items. 
and they were simply too big. It was like two to four days of work packed into one ticket, and we had to break it, break it down, break it down, break it down, until it was really doable in like one hour or two hours, and um, that was the key to success. And if you break it down, it's also much easier to visualize progress and to see where people are, get stuck. Because if you have a backlog item that takes like 20 hours to, to do, you see very late when it takes like 25 and it's stuck. But if you have a backlog item that takes like one or two hours, you see immediately when people get stuck and you can say, what's going wrong here? What do you need? Is there any problem? Is there something we can talk about? So break it down, break it down, break it down. Mm -hmm. And write tests for it. It's something we didn't do most of the time, and it was really bad because things broke that worked before, and once we had finished tasks, we were afraid of refactoring them because we didn't know whether they still work when we touch them again. So this is, I can't say it often enough, right tests, right tests, right tests. Um, it's so important for the quality of the software. Mm -hmm. okay. Continuous delivery, I make this very short. Half of the team was sitting in Cambodia, half of the team was sitting in Germany. The people in Germany were waiting for the things we developed in Cambodia. We didn't set up a continuous delivery chain back at home. It took us about two weeks in Cambodia, so in a sum it took us four weeks until we could deliver the first increment back home. That was way too long. Um, the next time I would go, I would make sure that before I leave Germany, we have a running deployment chain, because otherwise you get stuck and the people would get angry. <laughs> The lessons learned I told about smaller increments, deliver increments faster. If you are leading such a team, you have to step back as a developer and get used to the role as a project manager and someone who supervises things and does not do the development work yourself. It's, it's a role change you have to make. Um, clarify roles, customer product owner, scrum master, team leader, um, those roles got a little bit mixed at the beginning and we managed to clarify them only after a while. Um, because you have the Scrum Masters and POs in the team there, you have the Scrum Masters and POs at home, you are a customer, you are a developer, you are a project manager, all at the same time. And this can really confuse people and this can lead to, to tasks being undone because nobody feels responsible or tasks being done several times by several people because too many people feel responsible. Yeah, I should say that this is the first time we've had teams come out that were these multiple roles and to work strict, straight with our teams because typically they work autonomously and just provide um, you know, software back. So. And something Sebastian came up with which is really, really helpful is a code review workflow. You might think that code review is only for keeping the code styling uh, as you want it to be, but it's really much, much more. Uh, for me, it's a, it's a very elegant way of teaching people because they get an immediate feedback of what they just did and what they know how to do. So um, if you are in a similar situation, if you are working with uh, students, apprentices at your company, set up a good code review workflow and use this tool to help your people develop um, higher quality code and give them a, a feedback they can work with. Okay. All right, and then from us, um, what we, you know, we learned a lot of lessons as well. Um, basically, maybe came with new ideas and, and new working practices. Um, we, this project was, had a lot of new technologies and it was very complex. It's not a simple, Type of three, you know, extension development. There was, there's a lot more. Go look at CodeCoon. There, there's a lot to it. Um, and then, uh, and, and Mimi's, you know, very experienced. So the kind of the, the team is looking up to him um, at the same time as he's, you know, a guy out there and looking up to the, looking to them to provide a lot of um, instruction on how to get around town. And all, so there's a lot of a lot of roles here. But I think we learned a lot about that and how to, to work together. And I think things quite settled down and everybody had a good time. Um, and we also learned to do Agile better. Um, and, you know, we're just, and, and 
part of that is just from working with another company and how another company does things and they've developed ways that actually work really well and then you know things that that we had never thought of so yeah maybe you're interested in the in the business benefits of this collaboration um, when we prepared this talk we tried to come up with some numbers but we agreed that this is really hard to do because there are so many things that you cannot measure with with money or with comparing one developer with another or a group of developers with other developers. So what were the outcomes for the project? Uh, during the three months we set up a, a NEOS marketing website. Uh, NEOS was new to me. NEOS was new to the team there. Uh, we had the luck to have uh, Sebastian with us, which was and is a uh, contributor to the core development team. So he helped us a lot. and. Um, at the end, we had a, a website up and running where we still had to change some things back at home, uh, but we had kind of the basic infrastructure for it. Um, we did a styling for the management portal, which you maybe already saw for the Code Coon project. It's a, it's a flow project, and we got uh, Photoshop files from Rasmus, and then we had to uh, develop uh, CSS style sheets and HTML templates for it. And we also did uh, the user management for this portal in, in Type 3 Flow. And um, we wrote a lot of chef recipes to set up our infrastructure. And at the end of the, of the collaboration, um, those recipes were sent home. And within one week, uh, a team at home could set up the, the infrastructure and the data center that we needed for the, for the project. Yep. Oops. Sorry. <laughs> we wanted to do another slide on on oh the next business benefits. There we go. That um, was something else. Um, maybe maybe you could. Yeah, we agreed that it's not only the the direct project benefits or the outcome of the project that was uh, fruitful in this collaboration, but it's also a lot of things that you might call soft skills or that are happening on the on the side of the project. Um, first of all, our company is quite small. We have 25 people, which is big for maybe a type of free agency, but compared to companies like Microsoft or SAP, we are quite small. We have flat hierarchies. There's not much chance to climb up the career ladder and to earn a tremendous amount of money. Um, but what I'm very thankful for is that um, Jürgen is very into providing us fun at work. And, um, this chance to go there was definitely something very special that was provided to us. Um, and it's something that the company can give to their people with, um, let's say, doable amount of money. Um, and also, I think a relationship has started that hopefully goes on between our two companies. Uh, we will come back to that later. And um, I have to say, I feel a lot more comfortable in the company after this exchange because I learned a lot and uh, I learned a lot about myself and um, I had a lot of ideas what I want to bring back to the companies and I see that this works out and things are improving and we are developing and we have a lot of innovation going on before and since then. We have to really hurry now. Yeah, we will run through it a little bit. Okay. What were my lasting expressions? Uh, in the background you can see Christian Trabel, which you maybe know from the Type 3 server team, and he's eating ants. Um, <laughs> I tried that too, and I, I did eat a lot of other things I never ate before. <laughs> uh, and most of them were really tasteful. I never thought that frogs were that good. Um, I, I, I think I never experienced people who had such a big motivation to learn things. Um, the, the team I worked with in, in Cambodia, it was really impressive how eager they were, lear they were to learn the stuff we, we brought there. Um, and they are really dedicated to the company because it's a big chance for them to, to work there, to get out of poverty and to learn something that is sustainable in a, in a country that doesn't have to offer much. Um, and I also was impressed by the commitment of the experts who, who run the company. You got people like John who leave a Western world behind to go to this poor country and try to make a change. Yeah. So, what are the next steps? Well, um, for for us, um, we're continuing on, and 
Sebastian is coming out and bringing another uh, project out at um, the end of this month, um, which, which is really good. And he's going to be out for two, three months. Um, and then, well, it would be nice to have some sort of a developer exchange ongoing. I mean, it's nothing planned, but it um, would be nice to, to try to do, set something like that up because I think there could be a lot of benefit of people coming this direction as well. Um, and then what, Code Coon is, is online, it's live, it's happening, you know, go, go check that out. Um, and then now you've got some yeah. other challenges right yeah, now. For me, I think it's not the right time to go back anytime soon. I've hopefully started a family, I got married, and um, I hope I can attend the conference next year. And for me, it would be a big wish to have this, this developer exchange going on, and I want to um, motivate you to, to collaborate with this company and to try to provide some exchange maybe in your company. Um, I like to see people coming to the code sprints from Cambodia and hope that this can mm. continue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we come to an end. Um, mm -hmm. We want to motivate you to simply do something special. Mm -hmm. um, I personally learned that it's a great experience to, to get on such an exchange and such a collaboration. We have this really impressive community with a lot of companies running, yeah, basically around the world. And we are exchanging a lot of ideas and uh, technology and software, so why not exchange people more than we do it today and um, visit each other, work with each other and learn from each other. I think it's always win-win for all the parties involved. Mm -hmm. um, before working as a software developer, I was into guitar making and um, this is a handcraft as you all know and many handcrafts have this idea of going on a waltz. I don't know whether you, you heard that before but after you finished your apprenticeship uh, many people like carpenters or guitar makers they go on a journey and work at and for different masters, distribute their knowledge that they learned and gain from the knowledge that they, they learn at other workshops and I like this idea and maybe we can bring a little bit of that idea also to the IT business. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to leave you with a couple of things. One is thank you from Web Essentials. Um, and if you're interested in doing something like what Mimi did and bringing a project out and working on a project with us, please do so. You know, we have a number of different teams we can work with you on. And there's another opportunity next year Oh, I'm not doing that Next year, at the, we're having the second Type of Three Asia conference um, in August. So we'll get there in just a second. And so, it, <laughs> so in August next year. I'm sorry. <laughs> In August next year, we will have another conference, another opportunity for you to come out, and it's a lot less expensive for the um, the fees and stuff. Okay, there is there is a, a flight, but the, the the hotel and everything else, and you can stay a bit longer, um, and it should be really nice. So if you're interested in that, we're, you can sign up at the booth um, for us to give you some information. Yeah, yeah. Michael and thank me, you. thank you very much. Oh, and if you have questions, come on out to our booths. Um, if you want to look at Code Coon, you might.